Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up 2D sprite animations inside of the Unreal Engine using Paper 2D. So in order to get started with this, let's go ahead and create a new project. So I'm going to go to Games here, Next, and we'll start with a completely blank project. So I'll give this project the name Paper 2D Tutorial. And we'll go ahead and create the project with otherwise default settings. So if we're going to be using sprite animations, the first thing we're going to need to do is to bring in sprite sheets for the characters. So I'm going to be pulling in some assets from Pixel Adventure 1 and Pixel Adventure 2 as uh, free packages that you can grab online. I'll link those in the description as well as the finished project when we're done with the tutorial. So I'm going to need this enemies folder and the free folder. And I'm going to drag those into the project here. And also, I'll group these into its own folder as well. So I'll go to Add New, New Folder, and I'll just call this Pixel Adventure. So it's a little bit clearer where these are coming from, and I'll put them into the folder. So after a little while, they're in the folder, and we can start using them. So instead of Pixel Adventure, we can go into Enemies or Free, wherever we want to find a character from, and we can find the sprites for it. So let's go ahead and get the standard slime sprite over here. So you can see for the sprite sheets that there's currently a black background. And if you look really closely, they actually look kind of blurry as well. So that's not what we want for pixel art. So what we need to do with these is give it the paper 2D import settings. So I'm going to select all of these sprite sheet files holding shift down and then left clicking at the other end to get them all. And then I'm going to right click, go to sprite actions and then apply paper 2D texture settings. So when we do that, you should see the backgrounds turn into the transparent uh, checkered gray and darker gray background. And hopefully the images will look a little sharper there as well. So now that the PNG images are importing properly, we need to turn those into individual sprites that we can use in a flipbook. So I'll start with this idle run sprite sheet. We right click it, go to sprite actions. Because we're dealing with a sprite sheet that has many individual sprites, we use extract sprites. If you had one sprite for the entire image, you might use create sprite instead. So let's extract the sprites from the sprite sheet. You can see from the name of this image file, this is 44 by 30, that is referring to the size of each frame. In some cases, you can get away with using auto extract mode, but you can see that because the character actually warps its shape, in this case, the sprites aren't going to be the same size and that would cause problems for us. So we actually need to change the sprite extract mode from auto to grid because of that size difference. And then we'll tell the cell width to be that 44 pixels each. So you put that in and it should cut off each sprite at the correct size. So 44 pixels by 30 for each of them. We don't need to specify anything else here. And what you might want to do with this sprite underscore zero here is put in the name of the character as well. So the full name is going to be the name of the original file and then add on to that your naming template. And the zero will actually be changed here to whatever number the sprite frame is at thanks to the curly brackets. So we want this to refer to the slime. So I'm going to do slime underscore sprite underscore zero here. And now when we extract our full name is idle run 44 by 30 slime sprite underscore zero. And I think that's clear enough that we can always find this quite easily. So we have the individual sprite frames and now we need to turn that into a flipbook. So if I right click on the folder here, we can go to paper 2D and paper flipbook. And I can call this slime underscore run or slime idle. In this case, the idle and the run animation is the same. So I'm going to double click into this flipbook. We get this new window. And if you look down here, it'll say drop in sprites to add keyframes. So we need to select all of the frames for this animation. Left click on the first one, hold shift, and then left click on the last one. And you should select all of them at once. And now we can drag them in here for the animation. Should be playing nicely. The only thing we need to change here is the frames per second. The author created this pack at 20 frames per second for all the animations. So we update that so that it's playing at the right speed. Now we can hit X here. And so now we have the run animation properly set up. So we need a character to actually add that to. Now for sprites, you don't use a standard empty character sprite, but instead if you search character up here, there's one called paper character, which already contains a sprite component. So we can drag that onto our scene here. Uh, you'll see that it's blank right now. It doesn't have a sprite but we can change the source flipbook here to one we've created. So I'm going to select slime run 
And now if we look at this from the right angle, we can see it playing properly. And as long as we applied the sprite actions, apply a paper 2D settings, it should look good here, even for Pixar in a 3D world. Okay, now one thing we might want to change if we go into the blueprint for this character, and when we do that, we can give it a name. So I'm going to call this slime blueprint, and I'm going to save the actual blueprint outside of the pixel adventure folder, since this is more specific to the game than the pack it's coming from. And I'm going to hit OK. So we have slime blueprint saving in the game root directory. I'll hit select here and we can open up the blueprint editor. So you can see the arrow component is pointing to the right, which is supposed to indicate my understanding, uh, the forward facing direction of the character. So the sprite isn't actually facing that way. It's more facing to the side. And so how we can make this sprite face the front is to select it and then rotate it by 90 degrees uh, on the sprite component, not the actor component. So it's more the display of the sprite rather than the actual rotation of the character itself. So if we look at that, um, I, I think that's the right direction. So if we look at it now, it should be facing the front properly. If that ends up being the wrong direction, you could do negative 90 instead to flip it to the other side. Um, we'll do 90 degrees here for now. And we probably want to update the capsule component so that it actually fits our character better. So I'm going to, well, first I'll maximize this window so you guys can see better. And then I'll shrink the capsule significantly in all the dimensions and make it conform to the character a lot better. So now we can compile this, exit it out. Uh, the slime blueprint is kind of floating in midair. So I'll just select this instance of it, hit delete and bring in a new one. So as soon as we drop it in, thanks to the capsule collider, it should be positioned properly on the surface there. Uh, we can also bring this uh, player start back so that the flying camera uh, can see the character as soon as we hit play. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we hit play and we can see our sprite character just kind of sitting there and idling. So let's go ahead and set up one more quick animation. So the hit animation for when the slime takes damage. Um, let's just go ahead and do the same steps. So right click on it, sprite actions, extract sprites, and we'll manually set the size of each of them since they clearly don't have the same size for the character in all of the frames. Extract it with the proper settings and I'll set the naming template to include that hit bit. So hit underscore sprite underscore number of the frames. Extract and let's right click create a flip book under paper 2D. So this is the slime hit. Double click to open it and then we will bring in the frames and set the frame rate to 20. So now we have two flipbooks for two different animations for our sprite based character. So in your blueprint code, you can set the conditions for when you're going to change the sprite flipbook for different animations for different states. But for this tutorial, let's just show quickly how you can do it in code, but not necessarily the conditions for when you might do it. So let's edit the slime blueprint and what would do. OK, well, first we have to change it to full blueprint editor here. What we'll do with the event graph is we'll just say that when it begins play, we'll set the sprite flipbook. So to set the sprite flipbook or what animation it is currently playing, we need to get access to this sprite component. So I'm going to drag that into the graph. And then with the sprite, we do set flipbook. And now we need to target which flipbook that's going to be. So you can either select manually from a dropdown, or I think a better way might be to have variables set up for each animation. So that if you create a new character based on this blueprint, you just change the animations for each of the states. And then that's all you really need to update for a new character that does the same things like running, falling, jumping, whatever. So for variables, I'm going to add a new variable here and I will call this the hit flipbook and the top right for the details. We'll change the variable type to a flipbook paper flipbook object reference compile the blueprint and in this default value we'll select the slime hit so now we can drag this hit blueprint onto our graph get flipbook and connect that to the new flipbook so what we'll do here is just event begins play we change the flipbook so it's going to be playing a different animation as soon as it loads but before it loads it's still doing the idle animation and so now if we go ahead and hit play, you'll see that the sprite flipbook has changed and the animation that keeps looping is now different. So in an actual game, you'd probably only want the hit animation to play once every time a character swings the sword at it. But this tutorial is just showing you guys how do you set up the sprites? How do you set up the flipbooks? So hopefully I've gotten you guys that far in this short tutorial. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.